بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ولا يصحب جميل اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في الأولين وصل اللهم وصل مبارك على حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في الآخرين اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم كل ما ذكره الذاكر الأبرار وكل ما غفل ذكر الغافرون all praises due to Allah subhanahu who knows what we reveal and knows what we conceal and even knows what the animals feel we thank him we praise him and on him we have reliance it is to him when we turn to for true guidance we ask him to send his peace his blessings his mercy on the best of human beings and prophets Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on whom be praised until the very end of our days we ask him for steadfastness guidance mercy and to never lead us astray and for him to save us on judgment day welcome everybody alhamdulillah to uh, our uh, session 21 of the reading and commentary on Imam Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala's book uh, al Ma'arif, which will be the last um, session on Muharram, reading it. And then the next session, inshallah, we're going to be discussing some events uh, that happened in Muharram in Islamic history. Uh, just as a quick, like, I guess, review or overview uh, of just some Islamic history that happened in Muharram. Uh, we left off where Imam Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala uh, speaks about uh, on the return of the Hajjaj from their Hajj um, and uh, some of their some of the blessings of what a person should do um, in in welcoming them. So he says, uh, The meeting of the beloveds is actually joining of the hearts. News about those lands is sweeter in the eyes of lovers of Allah than engaging in night conversations. And then he recites some poetry. ألا هل سمعتم ضجيج الحجيج على ساحة الخيف والعيسة تحد فذكر المشاعر المروتين والمروتين وذكر صفا يطرد الهم طردا. When the caravans arrive, I will go out to meet them. I will greet the people on their arrival. I will ask them about the sanctified valley in Mecca, about the land of Najd and the people who settled in Najd. Tell me something about the sanctified valley of Aqiq because you have just returned from there. Did you hear the um, clamor and noise made by the pilgrims on the plains of Al-Khayf while the camels were urged on? Memories of the sanctified places, Marwa and Safa, removes all of one's worries. The spirits of acceptance emanate from the accepted servants of Allah and uh, engulf or completely surround with the connection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Glitters on those who are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he recites some lines of poetry. وَخَجَلَتَ الْمُتَوَانِ عِنْدَ رُؤْيَةِ مِنْ قَدْ فَازَ سَابِقَةً مِنْ غَيْرِ إِقْصَارٍ مالي وين بعودت بي عن ديارهم عوائق من آثامي وأوزاري إلا حنين إليها كلما خمدت نيرانه هاجه وجدي وتذكار وتذكاري ولا أزال وإن شطت وإن قربت أثني بجهدي في جهري وإصراري على نبي له في الفضل منزلة علي علياء يقصر عنها كل مختاري محمد موضح الإشكال الأمال واضح الأغلال وآثار يا سيد الرسل يا أسمى الأنام علي, على علي يا خير الورى يا صفوة الباري عليك أزكى السلام الله ما, صد ما صدحت وورقا أو سحرت أنفاس, أنفاس وأسحاري Which means Oh the shame of the person who was left behind when they look at the person who went ahead and did not lag behind Although I may be far from them, I have, not burdened, I have not been burdened by my sins and evils. I possess the sole desire to go there. Each time the fire of this desire subsides, my emotions and memories rekindle it. Whether it's scattered or nor, nor nearby, I continue praising loudly and silently the Prophet وسلم, who possesses a lofty position which no one, can, no one else can reach. Muhammad وسلم, the one who clarifies all misgivings, fulfills all hopes, and removes all burdens. 
O leader of the messengers, O the loftiest of creation, O the best of all men, O the choicest, O, o the ch or the cho chosen of the Creator, may the purest peace of Allah be on you for as long as the do dove sings and as long as the early dawn, dawn enchants. It is the only. It is only the person who is beloved to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And selected by him who was given the opportunity of going to those lands repeatedly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of them. Ali ibn al-Mufawwaq performed Hajj 60 times. He said, after that I sat in a room and reflected over my condition and my many visits to that place. I do not know whether my Hajj was accepted or not. I then fell asleep and someone said to me in my dream, Do you not invite to your house only those whom you love? I woke up and felt at ease once again. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only invites those whom he loves to this house. Even if they feel like they're full of sin, may Allah, may Allah protect us all, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and make us thankful for what He has given us. Every person who performs Hajj is not necessarily accepted. Every person who performs Salah has not necessarily attached themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone who said to um, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, there's such a large number of pilgrims. He said, they are so few. He said, there are, there are those who are arrived are many, but those who are real pilgrims are few. A person of the past performed a pilgrimage and passed away on his return journey. His companions buried him and forgot the uh, axe in his grave. They dug out the grave to take out the axe and saw his neck and hands encircled in the ring of the axe. They poured the soil back on him and returned to his family. When they inquired about his condition, they said he remained in the company of a person and stole his money. He had performed a, the pilgrimage from that stolen money. May Allah protect us. And then he recites a poetry. إِذَا حَجَجْتَ بِمَالٍ أَصْلُهُ سُحْتٌ فَمَا حَجَجْتَ وَلَكِنْ حَجَّةِ الْعِيرُ لَا يَقْبَلُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا كُلَّ صَالِحَةٍ مَا كُلُّ مَنْ حَجَّ بَيْتَ اللَّهِ مَبْرُورُ May Allah protect us. If you performed hajj with wealth which was originally unlawful, you did not really perform hajj. Rather it was a, 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 the caravan or camels which performed hajj. Allah accepts nothing except what is uh, righteous. Every person who makes pilgrimage to the house of Allah is not necessarily accepted. Those whose pilgrimage is blessed are few in number. However, there are times when a sinner is given because of a good doer. So a sinner is given because of the because of uh, person who is righteous. It's related that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on the night of Arafah, I have given to the sinner among you because of the good doer among you. And this is a fabricated narration. It's a fabricated narration. It's not, it's not authentic. A person of the past went on pilgrimage. He slept one night and saw two angels descending from the skies. One, one of them said to the other, how many people perform pilgrimage this year? The man said 600,000. He asked how many pil people's pilgrimage has been accepted. He replied, six. The man then woke up and was almost disheartened by what he saw. The following night he saw the two angels descending and repeated the same conversation. One of them said, Allah gave to each, each of those six people 100,000. In other words, 599,994 sinners were forgiven because of the six people. A person of the past used to say in his dua the following. Allahumma in lam in lam taqbalni fahabni liman shi'ta min khalqika. Oh Allah, if you do not accept me, then give me because of someone you love from your creation. If a person has some good deed which is not accepted, they may well be paid back for a calamity stricken person is paid back with, and mercy is thus shown to them. Here in Arabic, Man Rad Man Rudda Alehi Amaluhu Walam Yukwal Minhu. A person of the past said it in their dua on Arafah. Allahumma in kunta lam taqbal hajji wa ta'bi wa nasabi fala tahrimni ajra al musibati ala tarkika al kabula minni. O oh Allah, if you do not accept my pilgrimage, my tiredness and fatigue, do not let your in acceptance of me, deprive me of the reward of my calamity. Meaning, 
because of the fact that you've not accepted it from me, this calamity in itself, make it a means for accepting from me. Another person would say, Allahumma arhamni fa inna rahmataka qareebun min al muhsinin fa in lam akun muhsinan faqad qulta wa kana bil mu'minin rahima fa in lam akun kadhalik fa ana shay'un wa qad qulta wa rahmati wasi'at kull shay fa in lam akun shay'an fa ana musabun bi raddi 'amali wa ta'bi wa nasabi fala tahrimni ma wa'adta al musaba min al rahma subhanallah listen to this he said, Oh Allah, show mercy to me because your mercy is close to those who do good, who are muhsineen, not just, you know, they do good, they're excellent, they fulfill in excellence. And if I have not done any ihsan, excellence, then your mercy is close to do, uh, then you at least have said, He is merciful to the believers. And if I am not like the believers, I am a thing. And you said, my mercy encompasses everything. And he said, if I am not a thing, I am a person who has been afflicted by the rejection of their deeds, tiredness and fatigue. Do not deprive me then of whatever mercy you promised an afflicted person. SubhanAllah. Hilal ibn Yasaf, Hilal ibn Yasaf said, I, never, I have heard that when a Muslim makes dua and it is not accepted, a good deed is recorded in their favor because of their dua. Narrated Ibn Abi Shayba, in other words, he receives the reward of the affliction for the non-acceptance of their dua. And then he recites a poetry, Ibn Rajab rahimahullah. وَمَنْ كَانَ فِي سُخْطِهِ مُحْسِنًا فَكَيْفَ يَكُونُ إِذَا مَا رَضِي If that being is so affectionate when he is angry, how much more affectionate is he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he is pleased? Ibn Rajab says, the return of the pilgrims remind us of our return to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because remember, I told you all in Dhul Hijjah, which we already covered for those of you who missed it, the, the sessions 1 to uh, 13 or 14 are all about Dhul Hijjah. And we said that Dhul Hijjah or the Hajj, uh, the month of the Hajj, mimics the journey to Allah, it mimics, it's a dress rehearsal of the Day of Judgment. So everything about it from one station to another mimics our passing, mimics our Day of Judgment. So he said, the return of pilgrims reminds us of our return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person of the past was on a journey and then returned to their family who were most happy by their return. There was a pious woman present and she began crying. She said, this person's returning to us reminded me of our return to Allah. There will be those who will be happy and there will be those who will be destroyed. May Allah make us of those who are happy. A king said to Abu Hazim, how will our return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be like? Abu Hazim said, as for an obedient person's return to Allah, it will be like the return of a person who was absent from their family and they return to them while they are yearning for them. As for the sinful person's return to Allah, it will be like the return of a fleeing Slave to their angry master. And then he recites a poem, uh, Ibn Rajab recites a poem, لَعَلَّكَ غَضْبَانٌ وَقَلْبِي غَافِرٌ سَلَامٌ عَلَى الدَّارَيْنِ إِن كُنْتَ رَاضِيًا You are perhaps angry, or my heart is heedless. May there be peace to both the worlds if you are angry. And he said it's related in one of the Israeli narrations, meaning Judeo-Christian narrations, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, has not the yearning of the righteous to meet me gone far too long? I am even more desirous of meeting them. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Ibn Rajab says, what a great difference there is between two groups. Number one, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, لا يحزنهم الفزع الأكبر وتلقاهم الملائكة وتتلقاهم الملائكة هذا يومكم الذي كنتم توعدون Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says They shall not grieve in that great terror and the angels shall receive them saying this is the day you were promised Surah Al-Anbiya Ayah 103 versus the second group which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them يدعون إلى نار جهنم دعا In Surah Al-Tur Ayah number 13 the day when they will be forcefully driven to hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the first group, not the second. And then he said, Ali radiallahu anhu said, the angels shall meet them at the entrances to paradise and say, and say, 
سلام عليكم طبتم فدخلوها خالدين سورة الزمر آية 73 Where it will be said to them Peace be on you, you are pure people So enter it abiding, it for, abiding in it or living in it forever Ibn Rajab says each young, each young person will meet the person whose needs they are appointed and fulfilled And take them around just as children do When a friend from a distant land comes to their house So they will be taken by your hand inshallah and shown your Jannah Your paradise they say, to him, they say to them glad tidings to you because Allah prepared such and such things for in honor of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors those who enter paradise. One of those who are the, the young um, servants of paradise will go to the person's spouses from among the maidens of paradise and say to her, this is such and such person. And they will mention the person by the name which they had in this world. And the maidens will ask, did you really see them? The youngster will say yes. They will try to conceal their joy until the entrance of the door. Abu Sulaiman al-Darani said, The maidens of paradise will send one of the servant, servants and say to her, Go and see what has happened to the friend of Allah. While the servant is gone, the, the maiden will feel that they are taking too long to return. So they send another servant to check and another one. In the meantime, the first one returns and says, I saw them at the scale where deeds are weighed. Then the second one returns, I, said, I saw them at the Sirat, the bridge which, which is over hellfire, which one passes and every person will have to cross. The third one returns and say, they have entered through the doors of paradise. The maiden tries to conceal their joy and waits at the entrance of paradise. When the, when the person comes to her, they embrace the person, inhale such a wonderful fragrance from, uh, from, from the maiden which will never leave their body. And then he recites a line of poetry. قَدْ أُزْلِفَتْ جَنَّةُ النَّعِيمِ فِيَا طُوبَى لِقَوْمِ بِرَبْعِهَا نَزَلُوا أَكْوَابُهُمْ عَسْجَدٌ يُطَافُ بِهَا وَالْخَمْرُ وَالسَّلْسَبِيلُ وَالْعَسَلُ وَالْحُورُ تَلْقَاهُمْ وَقَدْ كُشِفَتْ عَنِ الْوُجُوهِ بِهَا الْأَسْتَارُ وَالْكِلَلُ Which means the paradise of comfort will be brought near. Glad tidings to those who have settled down in its open spaces. Its tumblers are of gold which are filled with wine, salsabil, and honey. The, the maidens meet them while they have removed their drapes and thin veils, exposing their faces while they see them. So uh, this is inshallah the end of Imam Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala's uh, uh, reading of the section of uh, Muharram in his book, um, uh, in his book, of Lataif uh, al-Ma'arif. What we'll do now is we're going to cover actually now uh, some of the events that happened in history uh, in Muharram so that we can just cover it now instead of having a, an entire section of it. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll speak about it now, inshallah. Azajal. Speak about it now to make it simpler. Among the events that happened in Muharram in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I think it's important to cover that first, inshallah. Okay, so from the events that happened in the, in the months of Muharram, okay, uh, Abraha attacked Mecca. Abraha attacked Mecca. Abraha, remember the famous story in, um, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, that uh, he sent upon this army that came to attack Mecca to destroy them, Tayran Ababil, right? Um, بِإِلَافِ قُرَيْشِ إِبِلَافِهِمْ رَحْلَ تَشْهِتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ No, that's not it. Um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the, uh, the, the surah in uh, which um, these, these uh, birds will attack this army of um, uh, elephants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them in Abraha. Right? أَرَيْتَ الَّذِي يُكِ... No, no, I'm sorry. أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِأَصْحَابِ الْفِيلِ أَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ كَيْدَهُمْ فِي تَضْلِيلِ وَأَرْسَلْ عَلَيْهِمْ طَيْرًا أَبَابِيلِ تَرْمِيهِمْ بِحِجَارَةٍ مِّنْ سِجِّيلِ فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَعَصْفٍ مَأْكُولِ right? Have you not seen of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord, did with the uh, people of, of, of the elephants? Uh, that he's, He made them uh, basically absolutely destroyed? This, this happened in Muharram, about 53 years before Hijrah. The 
other major event that happened was the blockade of uh, and embargo against the Muslims. It happened in Muharram, seventh year prophethood. Seventh year prophethood. And lasted until the tenth year Muharram uh, prophethood. Okay, so this was three years before Hijrah. So the, 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 the ihsar or the embargo happened in Muharram. And this was a very difficult time that the believers, in essence, they, um, uh, they, they went so hungry that um, they used to eat tre- the leaves off of trees. That happened in Muharram. It's called the, the embargo against the believers and, and the Muslims. And also non-Muslims as well who gave support to the Prophet Muhammad from Banu Hashim. They were also uh, you know, blockaded against. No one could trade with them, marry from them, or give them anything. And then um, the Prophet Sallallahu in, intention to make Hajj, uh, to make Hijrah, excuse me, his intention to make Hijrah happened in the Muharram. Uh, the expeditions of Najd, there was an expedition that was in Najd in the time of the Prophet ﷺ in the third year Hijrah that happened in Muharram. The individual Sariya of Abdullah ibn, uh, ibn Unais to Urana happened on the, th- uh, the third uh, year Hijrah in Muharram. The Prophet ﷺ was in Najd in, the, uh, in, in, in Muharram and almost all of Safa. The Sariya of Abu Salama to Qattan uh, including Tulayh al-Asadi happened in the fourth year Hijrah Muharram. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam marries Raihana from Banu Nadir in the sixth year Hijrah in Muharram. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent a, a battalion of Muhammad bin Maslama to Najd again in the sixth year Muharram. Uh, Amr ibn Umayy al-Damri is the first envoy of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to a foreign ruler. An Najashi, the the uh, Ethiopian king. Uh, that's his title, An Najashi. His name is Ashama. That happened in the seventh year in Muharram. Amr ibn As becomes secretly a Muslim in the land of An Najashi in the seventh year of Muharram. Abu As bin Rabi' leaves Mecca for Medina, and the Prophet ﷺ renews their marriage with Zainab in the seventh year of Muharram. Seventh year Hijrah. The expedition to Khaybar happened in the seventh year of Muharram, and also so on and so forth. Uh, in, in the eighth year, there was poverty in Medina, happened in Muharram. In the beginning of the eighth year, Zainab, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, passed away in Muharram. Um, and Al Aswad Al Ansi, the false prophet, appears in, in Yemen and c- creates a mad havoc. Basically, an insurrection based on false prophethood that happened in Muharram in the 11th year Hijrah. And the last uh, deputation, 200 members of Nakha'a, arrives in Medina in Muharram, which is this is the last envoy or caravan. Um, among the also, uh, among also some of the events that happened was the Prophet ﷺ married Safiya radiallahu anha in the 6th year Hijrah Muharram. Uh, and then after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the 14th year Hijrah, Abu Quhafa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was the uh, father of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he passed away in Muharram in the 14th year Hijrah, meaning three years after the Prophet ﷺ's passing. In the 16th year Hijrah, uh, the event of Mariyaj happens. And then in 61 Hijrah were the events of Karbala, where Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu was brutally uh, martyred in the plains of Karbala by the tyrant Yazid. And 99 Hijrah was this first siege of Constantinople. The first siege of Constantinople. In the 19th year Hijrah was one of the greatest events that uh, led uh, to the complete um, uh, victory against the, Ro- uh, the Persian Sassanid Empire and that is the Battle of Nahawand called Fath al-Futuh the Great Conquest against the Persians happened then Um Habiba radiallahu ta'ala anha also was married to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Muharram and um,
Okay. And on October 30th, 1918, which was in Muharram, Muharram in the year 1918, the Treaty of Mudros was signed, which began the dissolution of the last caliphate, the Ottoman Empire. It happened in Muharram. So Muharram uh, is, is known, obviously, for a, a month of great events in Islam. Great events, uh, uh, you know, symbolic events. And, and events that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in essence, we believe, tilka al-ayamu nudawiluha bayna nas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this, In this month, we, as we know, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was buried. He was buried on the first of Muharram in 24 Hijrah. And also on this month, Musa alayhi salam was saved from uh, Pharaoh. And as we covered, Musa alayhi salam and, his, and, his, and Bani Israel were also, their, uh, their repentance was accepted. As we mentioned, among the other events that we mentioned, Inshallah ta'ala. With all of this, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He blesses us in this month. This is a sacred month as we said. And on top of that, we, um, in this month, hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes our state from one state to another. That, we, that He betters our state and that He makes us of those that in this month, as Ibn Rajab said, if you repent at the beginning and you repent at the end, then Allah forgives what's in between. So make this a month of repentance, make this a month of turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make this a month where you call to Allah azza wa jal, and make this a month where you turn back to Him. And just as He said, as the pilgrims return home back from their pilgrimage, usually in this month, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to turn back to Him in a sacred month like uh, Muharram to accept our fasting. Try to fast in this month, it's good to fast in the sacred months. Try to uh, give charity because it's good to give charity in these months. And try to do as much good as you can. And inshallah ta'ala we will continue in the month of Safar. So when Safar starts, we'll continue our reading. Inshallah of the virtues of Safar. And also talk about some of the events that happened in Islamic history in the month of Safar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Wa akhru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala habibina wa nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jma'een. Wa razaqna murafaqata nabina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fi a'la jannati al-ilin. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair jazakum.